engage in strategic prayer listen the seasons of attack in a believer's life or a season of pruning and making they are seasons of deep spiritual emphasis they are seasons of prayer and intercession that's not the time to pray morning and evening that's the time to pray anyhow and anytime because you are in a season your anchor will be your prayer hallelujah day and night you are praying lord i don't know what is happening to my life but i'm praying you have your prayer time in the morning you have your prayer time in the evening but every time is prayer time every time is prayer time an evil report your wife just lost her child what are you doing i am praying why i'm in a season is any man afflicted james chapter 5 and verse 13 let him pray let him pray not let him discuss not let him grumble around not let him call god names and say i will backslide let him pray psalm 34 please from verse 4 to 7 and then the last part and we will pray psalm 34 i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from what all my fears next verse we are reading to four to seven they looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed six the poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of how many all his troubles last verse the angel of the lord encampeth around them that fear him and delivereth them prayer is a powerful weapon in all seasons but especially this season lord what is happening around my life my wife just got attacked my son just got attacked my job just got attacked i am not understanding what is happening i set myself like daniel onto prayer god grants you grace you can add with fasting add with fasting this spiritual laziness of eating anyhow anytime many believers now fast as a ceremony three days fasting you carry it on your head as if you as if it's, it's 12 years fasting if you love food more than your destiny life will cheat you again and again food is okay oh, but please let me tell you mighty ones you must learn to show food that your spirit man has grown above it there are many of you here you cannot remember i may be wrong i'm not saying you should do it please i'm not saying you should do it but as far as i'm concerned there are spiritual levels that if you get to a week should never pass that you did not fast you are joking you are joking not with what you are doing to hell you are joking seven days ah no himarama <laughs> Imarama Imarama To the king who sits on the throne Imarama To the king Listen, let me tell you this I will continue to teach you this secret real victory real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep real victory is not gotten shouting around just making noise real men of power contact power 
when men sleep May God give you the grace to rise above sleep. I'm praying from the... May God give you the grace to not allow sleep cheat you. That God can wake you up in the night. No light. Off the light. You are praying. Don't allow distractions. You are praying the next thing. You see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract. Off the light. You can use your phone light. You are in the night alone. And watch what happens. You are nobody seeing what you are doing. But there is a register. Every day you are signing. It is the day you get to the stage to preach. That's when God will not disappoint you. Don't come on stage and talk nonsense. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Rose of this and that and that. God is not a scammer. He's not a magician. No track record in the secret place. You will flatter yourself to nothing in it, in the open. Please learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Receive grace to dedicate night times and pray. God didn't give you a house just to keep things. Turn everywhere to a prayer altar. Turn your toilet to a prayer altar. Turn your living room to a prayer altar. When everyone has gone off the television, don't pray watching a film. Even if it's a Christian movie, you are not praying. Shut it down. Lord, this is me and you here. I don't know what is happening to my life. A time will come, you will feel like just leaning. Get up and say, Satan, you are a liar. I'm going far. A time will come, your tongues begin to change. What you are saying, it will never be what you started with. You, are, you, you have entered a level in the spirit. Tongues are languages. And there are levels of power contact. Groanings that cannot be uttered. You get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray. There are times that only one word, one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes. Pray it. You are receiving power. Prayer is not something you do in a group so that people will see you and think you're a prayer warrior. Don't joke with your destiny like that. Don't joke with your destiny like that. The Bible says to enter and shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret. You don't need to have a prayer point. You don't need to have a prayer point. Just stay there and begin to pray. Sekas kaparakatos, embrekete keleka takatos, sikos kamanakata. And while you are praying, your flesh is weak, but your spirit is willing. Listen, can I tell you this? There is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life. It must give way. It must give way. Fire is an emblem of the spirit. It's one of the emblems of revival. It's one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place. Fire does not only refine. Fire is for judgment. There are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch. My brother and my sister, if you pray from your heart, some things will shift. You will wake up in the morning and know I shifted this through prayer. There are attacks that only prayer can challenge. 
pray for me pray for me is wonderful but you must become the priest of your destiny can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes Salabakata. Senakandas kama hasabash. Rakata bakato sopakoto shekete nikata. Emprata seneketo shanikata. Sasete shana haskabaratos. Rekete kete kete skabarakatos. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life. I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life. I cannot allow my prayer life go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Oh, take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. Skabaratoskama. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual realities. While men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and saw tears. Pray. Pray. Outside, pray. Through the king who sits upon the white horse. Through the king who sits upon the white horse. Shelabakata rekotosia Imarama 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 To the king who sits on the throne Imarama to the king who sits on the moon. Hey, Barata Katosha Bradekatella Katos. A Katapra Katoska Nekatabra Sanakata. Tau se Seneketosha Latoske Mahasa. War to them who are at ease in Zion. War to them who are at ease in Zion. To the king who sits upon the white horse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're praying. Psalm 125. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise, you would have given up. He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, use the same strategy to strengthen, strengthen. Prayer is a strengthener. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. Next verse. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people 
from henceforth even forever next verse for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity next verse do good O lord unto those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts we are reading till the last verse as for such as turn aside in their crooked ways the lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity but peace upon joshua selman prayer gives you stability in the next two three minutes you are going to pray and say lord let this prayer stabilize me i shouldn't be shaking over everything i should be able to laugh at certain storms and say jesus is lord lift your voice and pray stability power stamina the lord is my light and my salvation the lord is the strength of my life stability oh god stability oh god the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small your strength is small give me capacity endurance stamina the grace to pass through for the sake of my family the grace to pass through for the sake of my generation the grace to pass through for the sake of my my loved ones be strong be strong be strong be strong in the lord don't be weak be strong in the lord and in the power of his might be strong in the lord koinonia be strong in the lord be strong in the lord be strong in the lord don't entertain weakness be strong in the lord you are not the weak ones you are strong hallelujah by the spirit that raised christ from the dead we crush the works of darkness now yeah. pay attention i'm praying for you i decree and declare that if this is as a result of territorial covenants activities of ancestry that authorize darkness to launch attacks over lives over churches over ministries over individuals mysterious diseases that you had no part in i pray by the god of heaven tonight let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you i challenge suicidal spirits over this territory of zaria the spirits that cause young people to kill themselves and waste their lives in the name that is above all names we command that spirit is banished from this territory the spirit of discouragement the spirit of exhaustion in the name of jesus we declare be gone now and forever many of us believe life is intellectual so we think that the moment you are educated as as, as far as we know education to be the enlightenment secular enlightenment we believe we are ready for living other people think life is just biological so the older you grow you think your growth is qualifying you for living are we together other people think life is sociological so the more you know people you believe you have what it takes to live but i'm telling you this life is spiritual find out how many people's destinies have gone in shambles 
because of their not having this spiritual intelligence that life is spiritual everything brothers and sisters about life is spiritual you go back to the book of the beginnings genesis and everything is spiritual everything spiritual in the beginning the bible says god created now that is that is i tell you we can dwell weeks just talking about genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning what beginning god created the heavens and the earth so where was he because he created the heavens he created the earth meaning he was not in any of those places where was he the bible calls him dwelling in a place of unapproachable light governs the affairs of men from that standpoint god created not invented the earth was not invented the heavens were not invented they were created created with the intelligence of a superior being so it's foolish to walk upon the earth wondering if there is a synergy to the happenings of things life is spiritual the earth upon which you walk is spiritual you as an entity is spiritual unfortunately only witches and wizards know this are we together now only the people who destroy the destinies of men in villages know this the average believer is generally aware of the spirituality of life but has not come into an understanding that one of the keys to spiritual intelligence is to come to terms with the fact that life and everything about it is spiritual life and what everything about it no matter how trivial no matter how scientific spiritual hallelujah spiritual when you understand the spirituality of life then all of a sudden you will start seeing a line connecting dots as to the happenings of people's lives listen a man does not just get up and become poor like that a family does not just get up and not make progress just like that a man does not just beat his wife just like that a wife does not just beat her husband just like that the the source of that strength requires investigation are we together now a small child does not become so audacious that he looks at his father and says i can kill you no 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 no. the, the source of that audacity has to be investigated life is spiritual a church does not just grow members don't just carry their bibles from different points and start saying let's go to the same place without knowing themselves there's no wire connecting them you don't just open a shop and everybody from everywhere decides that they want to come to you no sir no sir life is spiritual you see men moving all around and you do not know what moves them spirituality of life someone decides to help you but you show up and something about your life you are not aware of makes the person to drive you away someone promises to marry you even goes to see your parents and all of a sudden introduction has been done he just comes up and says i had a strange dream i can't understand that's not the first time of having a dream but because of that dream you lose out on an opportunity brothers and sisters if you understand that life is spiritual you already without even understanding the nitty gritties you are already ahead of many people in life i will never treat my life from a scientific perspective no i will never treat ministry from a scientific perspective in the realm of the spirit one plus one is not two you have to define what one is you have to define what two is you have to define what other factors are in the equation we run our lives scientifically we run our lives intellectually sociologically and we become victims the book of job is full of 
mysteries that open up the reality of the spirituality of life when you look at the book of psalms david opened us to the spirituality of life when you read psalm 91 he starts by saying he that dwells in the secret place question where is that location today because david said a man can dwell there have you found it where is it like an address david is giving us an address where people can find safety and he never said a police station he that dwells somewhere there is a place a man can stand that you become immune he that dwells in the secret place of the most high then the second shocking thing is shall abide not under the light under the shadow what is that abide under a shadow that means your shadow has a spiritual implication this thing you look at li listen 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 i'm not talking of all this moving around you and let you fall down that's i'm talking of something deeper you know physics just tells us when light is casted on an object it creates a shadow that's as far as you know but the bible says men can dwell under a man's shadow <laughs> do you love jesus we love the bible right so i mean you are not the way you are looking at me is as if i'm teaching heresy it's, it's right in the bible shall abide under he gives the shadow of god a three-dimensional explanation you can come under it then he says i will say of the lord he is this and that and that and that please give it to us psalm 91 let's look at it yes that's the song your influence is all over me verse 2 and i will say of the lord he is my what refuge and my fortress my god in him i will not trust so let's see why verse 1 and 2 is there verse 3 he says surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence look at all these descriptions they are description of strange things you don't see them with your optical eyes but their effects are as physical as anything verse 4 he shall cover thee with what stuff hold on describe a man for me with a three-dimensional shadow and has feathers somewhere in his body which part of him has feathers because he was not just speaking a parable he says he shall cover thee with his feathers <laughs> then and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield that means in the realm of the spirit truth is not an information truth is a physical reality it's a shield you can hold it like i'm holding a tie truth is is, is an object relatable are you getting something now you will be so blessed if you pay attention to what i'm telling you five this is not even this i just want us to look at it just play around it it says because of all these provisions this is the only condition where thou shalt not be afraid because there is something called terror by night everybody say terror by night no matter how peaceful an environment is the bible says once it is night there is a mystery of darkness and terror listen the bible says we wrestle not against against flesh and blood but against principalities powers listen then it says rulers of darkness they don't they cannot rule in light the moment he's not talking of spiritual darkness the moment there is physical darkness is a sign they are authorized to come out like animals that can only come out in the night so the bible calls it terror by night yet it's night time people like that's why people die in the night they that drink drink in the night when you see a man drinking by seven in the morning he's, he's a stupid man already something is wrong with his life but that's a, an acute complication no many things happen to people in the night the destinies of men are exchanged by night there are men that sit down and discuss they play the destinies of men like a chess terror by night not just um, terrorism as we know are you aware that there is such provision spiritual intelligence 
Number one, life spiritual. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. Have you ever seen them? Have you ever seen an arrow living somewhere? But he said there are arrows that fly by day. Only God knows how many people it hits today. Because it flies every day. You get up and leave your house and something happens. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. Life is spiritual. Job chapter 1. A meeting was being held in the heavenlies. Satan now comes and a conversation is engaged. Have you considered my servant Job? While they are discussing that Job is on earth. Minding his business. And all of a sudden things begin to nose dive in Job's life. It's amazing how many people try to ignore the spirituality of life and expect to rise in life. It's impossible. It's impossible. And more so, this is Africa. You know, we just pretend as... I'm not talking of witchcraft. The portals of Africa are open to spirituality. It doesn't matter through which force. I'm just saying the portals of Africa as a continent is richly open have you not heard of men walking back home and a hand slap them have, have you heard of those kind of things a real three-dimensional hand but they didn't see it you don't have to see it to feel it are we together and the person goes back and all of a sudden one of us showed me a picture of his dad yesterday half of the leg had been eaten you can literally see the bones like that half of it do you know what happened he was sleeping. A mystery happened. He woke up and all of a sudden, that leg physically. There are many things you call sicknesses. You don't even know where it came from. I'm sick. You go to the hospital. They tell you there is nothing wrong with you. They check everything. You know, the doctor even says, stop coming here. You are, you are wasting our time. But you know you are not feeling fine. Are we together? Mysteries that cannot be explained. Life is spiritual. I learned this very early in life. The spirituality of life. The spirituality of ministry. The spirituality of living. When you know this, your pursuit for God does not become, you know, every time you see somebody unusually zealous, they just say, Kai, this guy, I'm sure you are going to be a pastor. Or this lady, I'm sure God is already grooming you. He has isolated you and is grooming you to be a pastor's wife. No. The key to survival is to become spiritually minded. Please hear what I'm saying. Some of our parents right now, ignore this and they are paying for it dearly there are mysteries in people's families they do not ex they do not understand life is everything spiritual when jesus came his birth was spiritual everything about it now look at this for god's sake a woman is minding her business probably imagining what dress will i wear for my wedding all of a sudden a stranger just appears. Hail Mary! He didn't even say, what is your name, ma? Hail Mary! In other words, we have been watching you. Your name is Mary. We know. You don't have to tell anyone your name in the realm of the Spirit. No, sir. No, sir. If God ever asks you what is your name, it's for a reason. I mean, it doesn't make sense for him to ask you what is your name. He wants to change it. Then that's when he will ask you. Yeah, in Scripture, Saul, Paul, and all of that. But that they are asking you because they want you to supply an information. No. 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 Are we together? Do you know? Let me teach you something. You can never see a spirit being and be the same. Whether a demon, whether an angel. You may never know what happens to you. Brothers and sisters, listen. If this is a shrine and you just run by mistake and say, Oh, the wrong place. As you never will live the same. No, it's impossible. Impossible impossible you thought you ran too fast to be seen the realm of the spirit is not like that please understand what i'm saying if you know this 
that you are coming for koinonia, you may be sitting outside. You will never feel bad again. Because you realize that, wow, this thing is that. It's just because we are, because of the physical comfort of maybe being inside and all of that. But it makes no difference. That's why you can be saying God is touching somebody and someone in the second overflow is flying there. You that you are close, you are now looking at ah, God, you mean you jumped me? Listen, the Holy Spirit does not move with time and distance. Mm -mm. These two factors don't exist. No, 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 no. Like you say, I have to touch you before touching you. That's physics. In the realm of the spirit, you don't do that. Are we together? Are you understanding this? So you can never see a spirit being. Anybody that tells you he has been having encounters with spirits, I think you should respect that person, whether in a negative way or positive way. That I've had some appreciable... And except if, if the person is lying, if the person is telling the truth, no, you are meeting a dangerous person for good or for bad. Most of the world leaders interact with spirits. Please look at me, let me preach to you. Forget the fact that you see everybody wearing suit and going for forums. They are being advised, counseled, rebuked, directed by strange spirits. There are documentaries upon documentaries on my system that proves to you that no man let me teach you something brothers and sisters you want to be famous a day will come a spirit must show up in your life to say all right now that you have gotten to this level we have to negotiate for it to go further i give you a guarantee 100 percent if jesus does not appear to you an angel sent from god does not appear to you a demon who are somebody is seen it's like a realm. You keep rising. Nobody disturbs you, but you get to a point. They say, okay, everybody that rises from here, right now, the realm of the spirit cannot be strange to such a person. That's why you enter a business meeting. Somebody looks at you. You look at him. Two of you know yourselves. Everybody knows what he has touched or otherwise. There is a level you cannot be neutral. Believe what I'm telling you. When you see people doing some things they are doing, they have seen something. When a woman looks at you and says, I will kill you, mark my words, you better take it seriously. Either pray or stand on the confidence of what you now know. But you say, ah, this is what you just, you will really die. Because, you see, let me tell you, there are too many laws that can remove your spirit from your body. Many, many laws. Many laws. N not just death. There are many spiritual laws that can separate a man's body from his spirit. Any of them can be manipulated to kill you. You see that? Sickness and accident are physical expressions of the commonest laws that are used to separate people's bodies from their spirits. Like you skin a cow. Have you gone to the abattoir? You see them, they have a skill. They skin a cow. There is a mystery that can remove your spirit from your body. And many people move carelessly. And then it happens. It may happen through a car. It may happen through different things. But it is still a manifestation of this. You cannot sit on certain positions being neutral. It's impossible. I remember one of our friends years ago. He got a job. And I remember him saying... They were paying them, them that were struggling, they were paying them 50,000 and they were paying the prophets 1.2. Now, if they don't call it salary, they call it honorarium, but it's still a release of something from the giver to the person who needs it. They pay you 50,000 for laborious study of 5-6 years under the most stringent conditions possible and somebody just throws and comes in and they give the person 1.2. You know why? Because that person has an advantage. He can do something. Hi! Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. I don't have to see you to talk to you. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. People's lives are being manipulated without their will. Life is spiritual. Many of us were born in pure Christian families. We never had any touch with idolatry. So you don't understand the spirituality of life. But for a few people who veered off here and there, did one or two things, life is spiritual. 
grandparents just come out and sit on the ground. And after a few minutes, they stand up. They say, it's alright. It will be well with you. Go. And you are saying, what did they see? Life is spiritual. In the Bible, before they fought wars, they will go and ask the kings and prophets, please, will we win? And then they will say, there's trouble. Oh. They will, and then they will say, how can we change it? Now, this is the part of spirituality that shocks me. The ability to change things. Change things by the Spirit. Like a cleaner. I look and I find out that this is supposed to happen. Then you clean it as if there's nothing there. Haba. Oh, you were supposed to die tomorrow. Then somebody just cleans it. What advantage do you have? Do you understand that your life is spiritual? When you sit down in that class, do you know that it's not just one person sitting down? Life is spiritual. Now, the, it's not to just make us irresponsible and just see demons in everything. When I talk of the spirituality of life, I'm not just talking about demons. I'm talking about the presence of spirits to guarantee anything happening. You, the concept of being an atheist is another class of deception. Life is very spiritual. You see a lot of people come to dig a well. After they dig a well, the water comes out. They will tell you, go and look for chicken. Has that happened to you? Go and look for chicken. They slaughter the chicken and make incantations in the well and the water will never stop coming. Think about that. Do you know the water on earth is older than everybody on earth now? I hope you know that. The water on earth is older than everybody on earth. You are not drinking a person. You are not drinking a substance. You are drinking history. This was only bottled. Only God knows who laid hands on this water. Could it be part of Noah's flood? Could it be? You just know you are just swallowing it and then your body just reacts. You take something and all of a sudden your body reacts. I'm comfortable. Koinonia, listen, listen, listen. Let me teach you these things. If you do not understand it, don't be great. Just get a one-room apartment, get married, have two or three children, be a kingdom financier, and wait for the day you'll be with the Lord. But that you want to rise in this world we live in. No. We're traveling to Benin Republic. I think I told, when we got somewhere, a man, one Lenge guy, very Lenge guy just looking, like all these smokers. He looked at me and he called my name, Joshua. You've seen them now. You see them in markets. They look at you and in five minutes they start giving word of knowledge. You've not seen those kind of people. They look at you and say, Madam, uh -uh, why, is, uh, why is, is, is Joshua stubborn like this now? He said, don't disturb me. But because they mentioned Joshua, I said, who? <laughs> say again. Life is spiritual. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written. It is written. I just appeared, but something has been written. A script. A script about your life. Written. When you understand the spirituality of life, then you also know that you have an advantage by the Spirit to manipulate things to be consistent with the Word of God in your life. This is, the this is where I'm taking you to. When I understand that life is spiritual, I don't mourn at physical results because I know that there is a loop through the Spirit where things can be corrected. Are you seeing that now? At that point, I stop worrying. Because I know there is an advantage. The advantage is my access. My access to spirituality. I can be assisted by a spirit being. In this case, the Holy Spirit. Listen. One of my best scriptures in the Bible is, Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. A beast of a man just came and said, If you don't tell me my dream and the solution, I will kill you. And he said, King, don't be hasty. Don't worry. Let's just go and sleep. While other people were sleeping, he knew that something happens to men at night. The night is also a time for revelation. Listen, you try praying in the night and try praying in the day. 
If you pray seriously, come and tell me the difference. Come and tell me the difference. This is this this one. I, this one is like my office. I can tell you everything you want to know about it. The night time, I have sorted out the mysteries of the night in a very strange way. The magi came out and they saw a star and they started smiling. They said a king is born. Not a child. A king is born. And they started going. When they met Herod, they said, um, we came from the east. Based on our study, we have books here prophesying and a physical star. Because in Genesis chapter 1, he said he made the stars to signify times and seasons. Times, seasons. Hallelujah. So, they looked at it and then it led them to the place. And when they got there, they saw a baby. But because they knew that it was not a baby, they started worshipping him. If, I, if you are worshipping a Jimmy's child, wouldn't somebody know that? They say you, they want to kill your child, a Jimmy. But now, two, three, or well, the Bible doesn't say three men. But we know Magi came from the east. And they are worshipping someone because they are seeing more than that. And all of a sudden, an angel appears and says, run away with this child. They want to kill him. Run quickly. Do you know why? Because Jesus could die. Hmm. Did you hear what I said? The angel will not waste his time and say, run away with that child. If he could not die, he could die. If, he, if they disobeyed that angel, they would have killed him. The only thing is the body would not decay. But he would die. Yeah, he would die. Are we together? When Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, Satan was waiting. Very strange. Immediately he finished, he just showed up. Now watch this. If the devil is near you, won't you drive him? But hear him, he's walking with Jesus. Satan, walking with Jesus. Please, come. You are not the devil in Jesus' name. Say amen. But watch this. I'm minding my business. And somebody appears and I look and say, Satan, you again. Think about that. This is what happened in your Bible. And he said, ah, Jesus, you are hungry. Turn this stone into bread. And then he said, it is written. And he didn't disappear. He didn't go. He continued with another temptation. He said, Jesus, follow me. Let me show you something. And Jesus followed him. Your Bible they went up the mountain and said, look at all the glories of the earth. Hold on. Where is that mountain where a man can stand and see the glories of the world at once? Is it Mount Everest? It's a mystery. These guys just came out of the physical realm into the realm of the spirit and said, stand. I show you all the kings I have empowered. This is it. Like a window, like you just step out into a door and show Jesus all the glories. He said, if you bow to me, I will give you. If you bow to me, that is the mystery of the wealth of sinners. If you bow to me, I will give you. Satan does not need money. He needs your bowing. If you bow to me, I will give you. So when you say you want to be blessed and not bow, ah, uh ah, -uh, he says no. You can't eat your cake and have it. Your allegiance, and then I give you every other thing. And he say no, I will have it are you seeing? So you just get up and say, why are Christians not getting jobs? Now you understand. He took him and showed him the system. Bow to me. So you want a job, but you don't want to bow to him. You must find out what provision has been made. Because Jesus conquered him. Then he now took him up a cliff. And he said, jump down. He said, he shall put his angels charge over you. Look at Satan quoting scriptures. The guy you call Satan. By the way, let's not, uh, it's not that we are talking about Satan, but do you really know who he is? Look up, please. Are you getting blessed? Am I boring you tonight? Who exactly is Satan? A guy with a horn? As Nigerian film has depicted? No. That's just to help you understand. Who exactly is Satan? Because according to scripture, we see that Satan is a person. 
He can be at a... Satan is not omniscient. Not all-knowing. The ignorance of Satan is clear from Genesis to Revelation. There are many things he did not know. Are we together? Number two, Satan is not omnipresent. Many times he's at a spot. He can't be everywhere. He's focusing on the issues that are most important. Question three, is Satan down, up, or where? Where does he live? Now, today. Because when we say down, down Satan, up, up Jesus, none of them is living up or down. That's not the address of any of them. It's not the address of any of them. You go up, I guarantee you are not going to see anything there. You see that? Because I hope you know that this our realm is suspended in space. Space that even scientists don't know. There is no reference to measure where we are at now. And it was concealed by the wisdom of God. You can't, you can't tell whether we are in the middle. What, where exactly are we? You call this solid. You are standing here now. But you are floating and moving around. Think about it. Yet yeah, the Bible says it has foundations. The earth. Your earth. Jesus himself, or well God speaking now, told Job that the earth has foundations. Who is Satan? Why does he make you afraid? Please look at me. Let, let somebody be delivered now. Who is that guy that threatens the whole world? Where is he now? If you call him, will he come? Are we together now? Do you know there was a time in the civilization of God's kingdom where Satan was not there? He was not even created. I hope you know. Satan has a creation date. He was not born, so he was created. Are we together now? Let me shock you. Number two, I hope you know Satan is not the most dangerous of spirits. Evil spirits now. No. Of course. The Bible never teaches that. That Satan is the most dangerous of the spirits? No. There are spirits currently now that were bound in everlasting chains. Now, as I speak, they could not be released because even the elect, if they are released, they may not stand them. Now, as I speak, there are spirits bound. But Satan is going to and fro. He's not part of them. I want you to understand this. You see, you disarm darkness when you have light. You disarm darkness when you have light. All through scripture, we see that demons can be told what to do and they can be told where to go. And under certain conditions, they must obey. Are we together now? So how does Satan carry out the advancement of all of these things? How does he do that? You see somebody who minds his business and you begin to pray for him. He's manifesting the power of God is upon him and he's vomiting something physical. Vomiting razor, vomiting this and that. Now that's an ugly scene, frankly speaking. But I mean, it's a shock. I've counseled so many people. I remember one gentleman who said they, their father took all of them for protection. After making incisions on them, God is my witness. They gave all of them two two razor blade, physical sharp razor blade. The man said, "Just close your eyes and eat it." The guy said, "Are you joking? This is razor." And they said they threw it in their mouth and they were shocked. They didn't wound them. They didn't do anything. It disappeared. Nobody swallowed their own. Now, when a razor disappears in your mouth, you have to find out where it went to. Say after me, life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. There are people who end their salaries. Their physical money disappears. I'm not saying sickness took it. You kept 20 naira, you come and find 15 naira. Yet you are alone in the room. There are individuals that have strange visitations by men, women. Strange beings in the night. A spirit comes and then comes to sleep with you or do certain things 
and you get up with all kinds of things. You have a dream that there was an incision. You wake up physically with a mark with blood. Was that, was that just a, was that a story? A spirit having an affair with you in a dream? Because spirits are neither male nor female. You understand? So there is no reason why you should be having that. Let me explain to you the mysteries behind people's lives that they don't know. Pay attention to what I'm saying. We live in a world that you must have spiritual intelligence. There are four things I'm talking about. Maybe I'll just take this one today. Because I can dwell here and explain to you the mystery behind the happenings of people. Just like that. Life is spiritual. All of a sudden, in three weeks, promise, men start coming to your life to favor you. Where were they? What happened before that they didn't come? Somebody spoke to you. He didn't give you money. He just spoke to you. You didn't see anything leaving him. It's not even that his saliva touched you. He just said something to you and you left. Believing you carried something. And you come out and people start treating you in a certain way. Say after me, life is spiritual. You had the testimony of that dear lady about the favor. How many of you have been crying and your helpers are next door, but they cannot speak to you? But all of a sudden, something happens and you begin to see people arise for you. Life is spiritual. Every one of you seated here, as many as you are, look at people standing outside. And I say this with all humility. Human beings are not idiots. Nobody comes to stand outside in the cold and just watch him because he's trying to... What is so special about the man of God? Everyone say life is spiritual. It's not just poster. It's not just balloons. There are mysteries. Do you know sometimes I watch people when I come for Cornelia and I see people sit down. I know that the spirit realm brought them. Even them, they are surprised. What am I doing here? Yet you are still coming. Spiritual. Are we together? When a lady gets married and all of a sudden her womb closes. Watch this. What is Satan looking for? Why is her womb closing? She goes to the hospital. The doctor says, you are fine. We've checked you. You are okay. Oga, we checked you. You are okay. But then the child does not come. At all. Two years, three years, five years, the child does not come. And then all of a sudden, they begin to have problems. Husband and wife. And then everything scatters. Are we together? And then watch this. That same woman will live in defiance and go and have an affair with another man and get pregnant instantly. Instanter. That means it was never about anything wrong with her. There are people who have seen people, have prayed for people with HIV. It's not that they live a careless life. No, no. I remember a testimony, I don't know if it was shared, that was shared. Someone went to bed in the night. All of a sudden, a stranger appeared, held syringe, and told the person, this thing inside it is HIV. Injected the person, he woke up physically with HIV. Is there any amount of antiretroviral drug that will heal that person? If the sickness came from the realm of the spirit, medicine can only manage it. The real cure, the real cure will come from the realm of the spirit. Are we together? Families in disarray because they do not understand that life is spiritual. There are people who will be driving driving going to their place of work at top speed the car will just lock lock in one position i've spoken with many people who had accidents you ask them what happened they tell you i tried to turn the steering i'm not a careless driver i did my best i was watching myself dying you know i've seen the spirit of death i know it it knows me i've seen the spirit of death so i know what i'm telling you it comes to hospitals in the night. Patients in wards. And all of a sudden, hovers round. And all of a sudden, people just leave. And in the morning, you come and find out so-so person is dead. 
There are times it will come over territories. Like a city like Zaria like this. It will just come. It's invoked by powers. They do incantations and invoke it. It can loom around a territory for three weeks. And there are ghastly motor accidents. Headache killing men. A pastor just standing on stage preaching and he will collapse and die. And then after a while, when the invocation has fulfilled its reason for coming, it quietly leaves. You see it happen. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and we cast you are mighty on your own. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Abraham, Abraham is returning from war. And all of a sudden, a strange man appears. The Bible says, no father, no mother. What kind of a man is that? Melchizedek just shows up and says, Abraham, you don't know me, but I am a king. A king of where? I've never heard about you. You are a king. Listen. Listen. The earth is not the only place that has kings. Melchizedek said, I am a king. Of where? Salem, an ancient city of peace. Then he looks at Abraham and said, I'm on assignment. Abraham gives him a tithe of all. And he says, Abraham, I want to activate something in your life. Blessed be Abraham, possessor of the most high, possessor of the heavens and the earth. Listen, you never see Melchizedek in the Bible again. The next time Melchizedek shows up is in Jesus. Hold on. The Bible now calls him a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Read your Bible and see the strangers that met with men that we never saw again. Never saw again. Never saw again. There are men who started churches. When the church started growing, one time all of a sudden spirits just appear to them and the power that controls this territory we can negotiate or this bishop oedeko shared and said how that it, the kaduna church was not growing still anointed still with power the kaduna church was not growing and all of a sudden he said one time they were fasting and praying say life is spiritual and all of a sudden he came out and the holy ghost asked him to come out he said look and he looked and he saw a dark veil. Dark veil covering the people. He said, this is the veil that misinterprets what I am doing. Misinterprets it. And he commanded it and it left. He just left like that. And all of a sudden, members started coming. What is the relationship between members and this? Have you not heard of people who want name kings and they bury their children? Correct? They bury people alive and you just get up and come to fight them you die for nothing i was in mina last week and one of us the media person met me and then you know talking about the security situation around and he said something he said a particular village when there was war about to happen in a particular village that the people there said no problem that the people just carried their charms and came and lined it in front of the village mysterious substances started killing the armies one of them something at his hand you don't know what it is those people they have it when the going gets tough they bring it out are you aware that life is spiritual are you aware that your life is spiritual when you know this it should not make you afraid it should give you the key to changing anything when you know that life is spiritual you will value prayer because you will know that when you pray among many other things you are changing things you are shifting things in the realm of the spirit my life today is a product of this singular revelation life is spiritual you never see me sit down and i'm just discussing physical things with people i may keep quiet and nod but i am reading between the lines 
And when I get it, I say, oh, that's it. We know what the problem is. Listen, Koinonia, let me tell you the relevance of this understanding. You never will try to fight physical people again. If your roommate is fighting you all the time, know that life is spiritual. Fighting your roommate is when you finish praying, you find out that they are behaving haywire. Don't you know that there is a spirit that was watching while you are praying and now you are coming. All of a sudden, they will pour water on your bed because anger is a gateway in the realm of the spirit. So the devil will try to rob you from joy. Joy. With joy shall you draw. That's why you finish praying and your father insults you. That's why as you are living from Koinonia, you receive hostilities from people. When you know that life is spiritual, you will stop being angry. And you will stop wasting your time. Let me tell you how many of us have aborted prophecy. You don't know that life is spiritual. The moment a miracle is about to come, that's when you hear stories that five people said about you. Satan is moving through men. Moving through men. The moment there is a breakthrough, did you hear this about Pastor Jakes? And then you are bitter, and then you are angry, and the demons say, praise God. This is exactly what we are looking for. And all of a sudden, the prophecy is aborted, like a woman pregnant. But there are those who understand this. And the moment they are looking at you, you say, no, no, I know it's not you. You are just a victim of the realm of the spirit. So I ignore them, and I keep dancing my way to joy. Listen, when Jesus was going to enter a city, do you know how he said we should enter? He sat down on a horse and said, people, praise and sing. If Jesus entered that city silently, something dangerous would have happened. He listened. Do you know joy and laughter are weapons in the spirit? Look at me. Look at me. Let me share something with you. Sam, if you are talking to all of us now and we start laughing and scorning you, what happens to you? Talk to me. Do you know if I am angry at promise, my joy is to see him angry. When he's angry, then what I have done to make him angry is working. But when you see somebody that you are praying that something bad happens to him, always happy and joyful, it will disarm you. The Bible says, why do the hidden rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. Listen, the kings of the earth, they set themselves, right, against God as his anointed. Then it says, he that sits on the throne, hold on. It didn't say he will fight first. The first thing that happens. Laughter is an expression of joy. Hold on, hold on. That's why when people are under the anointing, sometimes you see them laughing hysterically. Now, you are not spiritual, so you just think, which kind of men of God are these? That's serious breakthrough happening to them in the realm of the spirit. There are people under the anointing, you see them start dancing. I'm not talking of, they can't even control themselves. Dancing, and you may not understand. When they were going to take the ark back, there was a formula. It was always with singing and dancing. I was, I was sharing with you, Jimmy. I will just share it to help you. I, I think it was um, um, yesterday we were talking. I got up in the morning about to pray. And the Lord said, no, you are not going to pray. You are going to dance before me. Two hours stretch, non-stop. That's all I did. All I did. I was so tired. I, I said, wait, wait, which style now am I going to? I mean, what is all this? But I knew I'm smart enough to know life is spiritual. Listen, listen. That two hours may be equivalent to 15 years breakthrough. Two hours. You reign, you ancient Zion king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty. Joshua chapter 1, 2, 3 They surveyed Jericho And all of a sudden It says walk around Don't talk, just walk around What is the stupidity Of walking around Life is spiritual You call it madness A man is walking around once And then it says on the seventh day Hold on Listen, the Bible says The fence of Jericho Five chariots could stand on it so even if you turn it 
it will still become another fence. Are we together? There are people who are too big for breakthrough. They are too, they are, they are, they are, they are too carnal and scientific for the stupidity that spirituality requires. Life is spiritual. They moved around the seventh time. The moment they got there, he said, Now, Tejila, don't fight. Shout. Shout. And the Bible says, When they shouted, listen, listen, hold on. Hold on, hear me. Sometimes, sometimes you hear people say, Give God a shout. Or sometimes you see about to minister, and I tell you, you are going to shout the name Jesus. You may think they are just formulas stupidly. You see, this is. They, once your mind, if you allow people who are depraved and don't know God, they will rubbish your breakthrough. They will say, what are you doing? What, what are you saying? Same thing with praying in tongues. You are praying in tongues and someone sees you and says, you too, you are in this thing. You are doing this thing too. Ah! You too, you are, you are joining them at your age. You went to school. Listen, listen, I tell you, I have mastered how to destroy Jericho in my life. I know the principles. Life is spiritual. When I found this key, I stopped wasting my time. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you how to come out of any trouble in your life. Should I tell you? Listen, after you finish praying, listen, I want you to laugh and dance. Dance is a strange mystery of deliverance strange mystery believe what i'm telling you dance is a strange mystery of deliverance dr kenneth copeland asked bishop oyedeko and said you claim we taught you faith but how comes you are able to pack over fifty thousand people for services and oyedeko said i dance every one of those people to church see listen there is a time to pray, but there is a time to engage other things. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible calls it the sacrifice of praise. It didn't say the music of praise. It's a sacrifice. It will cost you, but it will tear your heavens open. Listen, you have not seen breakthrough till you know how to rejoice before God. There's nothing I know that paralyzes Satan like an expression of praise and joy. Is one of the seven mysteries God revealed to me. Seven mysteries. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me show you how men have commanded victory in their lives. When you don't know the key and you don't know that life is spiritual, you will waste your time. Cheap victories, you will never get it. I remember a woman who shared a testimony. Um, she was barren and then she started bleeding. She, she took him and then she started bleeding. And she went to a man of God who happened to be a doctor. True story. And the man said, Ah, Madam, Todd, right now, honestly, this, this thing, of course, you know what that means. It's, it's over. Just trust God for grace. And the woman said, No. I know what my Bible says. The man said, Well, you know I'm a pastor, but I'm also a medical practitioner. When he finished everything, the woman said she did, do you know what they say? Dancing vigil. Not, not you put vigil and put songs and what she said she danced her way and that child returned from wherever he was listen if you don't believe what i'm telling you honestly you can go home colonia has finished for you this night so that you don't waste your time you are too big to engage these mysteries some things will never happen in your life never happen hallelujah there are mysteries when the devil wants to get your life, he will use men. Listen, every time you start seeing strange attacks, it's a sign that something is about to drop. Be careful. Be sensitive. Bitterness will start coming. Are we together now? Betrayal will come. All kinds of things. There are demon spirits, desperate, trying to use men to look for access to sabotage. And that's why you use joy, 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 rejoicing dancing all these things distract you till the miracle comes find a man who has refused to get angry i show you a winner i show you a winner a winner some of you all this i'm like that you will never rise beyond certain levels 
In our family, we are like that. If I'm angry, should I not say it? Apostle, I'm a human being. You will sit there as a human being and die like men. men. Mysteries. This life is spiritual. You are looking for rent. And the rent has refused to come. Do you know there are times in your life, there is nothing about you that can bring that miracle. You are not expecting money from anybody. There is no hope of anything coming. Those are the times you engage this. You don't go around just saying, Sir, the other day I spoke to you, I'm still here. Or is it that you are not seeing me? No. Let God talk to them. You talk to God. You engage the mysteries. And while you are dancing like a mad person, do you know there are people between now and Friday, you will see the strange testimonies that will come in your life if you understand that life is spiritual. This is the foolishness some of us have adopted. Oh, we have been stupid enough to do it. And God has proven himself in a very dangerous way. When we were going for crusade, remember when our car stopped. Let me give you a real testimony. The car refused to move. They kicked it. It did not move. Remember, we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. They kicked it. All of a sudden, we were tired. Everybody was discouraged. Steve Strings just took the guitar and started playing. That was how we started singing. There are witnesses. We kicked that car. It started till we got to the crusade ground. When you understand that life is spiritual, you will know that it's not about your roommate. This, this is the only way to love people. So there's somebody now that you are bitter against, but you are turning your attention to the wrong person and you are giving access to spirits. The devil expects you to see promise. Promise, come, pass this way. And you just pass like that, pulling your mouth. And the devil says, this is exactly what I, I mean. I like this kind of people. They are like robots. Anything we want, they do. But the moment you are passing and he's pulling his face, and how are you? Ah, that's it. You disarm. It's a little act. But you disarm principalities and powers. Because life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Your breakthrough is spiritual. Your husband is spiritual. Your wife, spiritual. Your baby, everything. Your exams, spiritual. Listen. Listen, listen. I'm not saying you should not read. Listen. But um, listen, let me tell you the truth. Hear me. Hear me. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. No matter who you are, a day will come you will sit down and look at that paper. And you will know only God can help me. There is a key. Let me tell you what students do after exams. And let, that's why many people fail. They come out and then they go to somebody. There's usually somebody saying, what did you write here? Don't, don't do that thing. When you come out, walk away. Don't. I put five. You say you put 11. They say, how did it become 11? You didn't even put six. You have failed. The answer is five. Now, let me tell you what that... I'm not saying you should criticize people. Are you getting my point? When that happens to your spirit... All of a sudden, you go back and say, my God, this is it. It's over for me. My whole life has finished. You are helping the demons prophesy to yourself. You are helping to speak. Whereas, somebody else will know that honestly. It's not that I'm saying you should be lazy. But brothers and sisters, of what use is the spirit if there's no advantage? In the spirit world. There is an advantage. We are not idiots. Believe me. You dance an angel to your faculty. You dance an angel to your department. You dance an angel to open your file. Come on now. Dance your way to the admission list. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please believe what I'm saying. This is only one over four. I came tonight to open your eyes. Stop interpreting the happenings in your life. They, they threw you out of the job. Don't sit there and say, Kai, but these people, even my uncle, my uncle, you, you saw me. It's not about your uncle. There's something you can do about it. Stop calling home to listen to bad news. After you listen, close it and say, Lord, I still see what you are doing. I still see what you are doing. Are we together? 
You hear a word and they say, by the grace of God, your husband is coming. All of a sudden, things begin to happen around you. Somebody just comes and says, you say, why are you putting this marriage sin on your head? And all of a sudden, you feel ashamed, you feel embarrassed. When a prophecy is coming, you can't even lift your hands to receive it because they are saying they are seeing me. They think I'm desperate for marriage. They rob you of your joy. They rob you of your peace. You never get your miracle. Once you sit down, then the devil uses anger. You now sit down, you are talking about other people's relationship and marriage. Tearing people down and sowing a seed that will have a boomerang effect on you. Because life is spiritual. Hear what Proverbs says. It says, be careful as you speak for the birds will carry your words. Have you seen those birds before? The birds will carry your words. My life is spiritual. My life is spiritual. I cannot stop anybody from carrying charm. But I can stop it from touching me. I know what to do. I know what to do. I can't stop the spirit of death from standing on the road, oh Kai. But there is something, there is something that even if it's the devil that drives, he will drive me safely. These are not, these are not empty talks. This is what dominion is all about. I'm training you. I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. From now, when you walk out of this place, for some of you right now, there is a text message, a heavy insult waiting for you to read. Now hold on, you now know that you don't just turn and call people devils, but you just enter and your roommates, who right now as you are here, they are talking about you, and the Lord tells you, should I tell you how to win? Buy five for life. Go and drop it and say, people, this is for you. And you are saying, "Uh uh-uh, God, to be that much of an idiot? No, somebody that did this, is this lady that stopped me from marrying? She said something bad to one good military man who would have married me, and God says, Buy malt, a carton of malt, and go and greet her. Or God will say, wash their plates. I know they dirtied your bed. She just change it, sing praises, and wash your plates. Listen, when you disarm powers, you will see God rise in a fearful way. Are we together? Bitterness, anger, envy are more wicked than than anything you can think about. They destroy you. They are like a cancer that sabotages you. Many of our parents, you know why they may never prosper? They are angry at everybody. There are people now, if they see me coming, I see people frown. Oh, is he the guy? That's him. How are they getting money? Look at these this, this young boys. And so the angel, the grace for the blessing is authorized to live your life because anything you don't honor cannot be your inheritance are we together now what are they be careful oh all these young guys standing how can people be standing outside are you worshiping a man are you foolish don't castigate anybody but just know that those are joy robbers the moment they start speaking know that your blessing has left heaven and it's about to come and land in your life are we together Life is spiritual. Let me just narrow it down so that we can pray. The mystery of praise in a dance. In a dance. You hear me talking about this dancing thing. I'm not a dancer. You don't have to be a dancer. But if you want to move forward, you dance anyhow to your breakthrough. Anyhow. You are too big to dance your way to breakthrough. I tell you, you are too big to have an open heavens. It will never, never open. Ask David, David the king, the custodian of mysteries. When he was dancing and rejoicing, his arrogant wife came and said, What is this? I'm not saying you should dance in a nude and an ungodly way. I don't know David's dance, but I know the dance that is not David's dance. Let me balance it quickly. I, I was not there with David. But I know the dance that is not David's dance. There are many dance around that is not David's dance. Are we together? David's dance comes from a genuine heart. Not a heart of seduction and stupidity. David's dance is a genuine heart that is focused on God, directed to him. So let's, we're talking about David's dance here. David was dancing and the wife, who was too big, now came and said, what is this thing you are doing? You are a king. And David said, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know I was in the wilderness. Do you know what happened from there? 
the wilderness that brought me here and i'm dancing and you don't know that i got you by dancing of course it's a mystery i've been practicing you are saul's daughter you don't even know how you just came like that you came as an inheritance the bible may not record it but i believe he finished his dance and carried his sling and went to goliath and said have you done your own dance goliath because if you have not done it you are about to go down hallelujah i believe in the mystery of praise please hear me the mystery of praise psalms 149 give it to us one of the mysteries will touch this night because this is a year of triumph and i will be wicked if i don't share with you the secrets i operate in my own life psalms 149 please praise ye the lord sing unto the lord a new song listen and praise him in the congregation of saints verse 2 let israel rejoice in him that had made him let the children of zion be what in who their king three let them praise his name what let them praise his name in a dance let them sing praises to him with timbrel and harp for we are reading down for the lord taketh pleasure in his people he will do what beautify those who are humble enough he will beautify them with salvation next verse let the saints do what be joyful in glory let them sing aloud on their listen hold on just stay there let me explain this to you he says while you are lying down and all of a sudden do you know it's when people lie down that the devil brings thoughts i hope you know the bill is still there and all of a sudden oh lord you are good i know you are faithful i know you are faithful let the even on their bed verse six now here is the warfare dimension of praise he said let the high praises of god be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands next verse to execute what vengeance upon the hidden and punishment upon the people not by chasing them that while you are praising and dancing it is vengeance you are speaking in the camp of the enemy to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron there is something called the written judgment to execute upon them what hold on how do you execute it your own is to mind your business knowing that life is spiritual i know they said you are not from so 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 tribe they walk together and sack you don't go telling people to hate these people go to your secret place and start praising and see what happens in that office are we together it says this honor have how many the honor experience of expressing breakthrough there are some things that god gave apostles prophets teachers but he said this one this honor of experiencing breakthrough have all the saints praise you the lord cheap victories cheap victories by understanding life is spiritual and you carry all let me tell you another mystery carry all your challenges write it on a paper and dance before it put it on the ground and celebrate god before it like a madman don't worry just be that stupid and see what happens a child is not coming i know that me for sure i'm getting zero in this and that and begin to celebrate him celebrate him people will look at you and say what are you doing I'm praising him. Why? What did he do? No testimony. You had start doing all these church things that people do like fools. You're married, you go and lock you and your wife and tell yourself we are dancing our next level. When Jesus was entering the city, what did he do? Sat down on a donkey and had people praising and rejoicing. It was that atmosphere. He says, Psalm 100, please. Psalm 100. 
someone's life is about to change it says make a joyful noise hold on are you seeing another mystery joyful what Listen, praise the Lord. Listen, listen. He didn't say make noise. Making noise is not good, even for your health. He said a joyful noise. Hold on. Do you know what a joyful noise is? The revelation behind it. I'm not just shouting as an idiot. I'm showing you mysteries now. Praising a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Verse 2. Serve him with gladness. Look at how many times God talks about this. What is the protocol for accessing His presence? Come before His presence with, not with mourning. Hold on. Oh God, I thought the other time, what? don't give me any dream again. If I keep seeing mourning in my dream, and yet nobody sends me any alert. Are you not the God of heaven? I've been serving in Koinonia. Let me tell you what you are doing. You are just moving backward. Believe me, believe me, you are moving backward. Because a, a broken spirit dried the bones. Verse 3. Know that the Lord he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. So have this revelation. He said we are the sheep of his pastures. He will not deny you anything. There's too much gloominess and mourning. That's why I, I listen to the news just for the purpose of leadership but ask anybody who knows me i have no time listening to all this analysis and all this junk this and that is happening uh this and that dollar is one million to this i don't know what happened no, but all i know is that for with joy shall you draw from the wells of salvation praise the lord if god calls this year a year of triumph you must stop acting like mere men they can predict your life. They know when money is missing from your life. Your face will show it. Anybody in this room that took what doesn't belong to him, except I'm not a member of Koinonia, you think you are being spiritual, but that's not how to disarm powers. Strange principles that will lift. I'm telling you, this principle of praise with a dance and a shout of praise is, I, permit me to use the word, a wicked principle. You want to see speed in your life? Do this and see what happens. Make up your mind. Complaining. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you may be called blameless children of God. Right? The world is full of angry people. Do you know the classic sign that someone needs deliverance is anger? Anger. Offense. Everything offends you. Right now, after Koinonia, they say turn and hug somebody. You just turn and found out that they left you alone. That alone is enough to bring anger. Are you not my partner? Why are you turning to the other person? You are trying to say I'm not good enough. You are giving the devil. Hold on, don't laugh. You are giving the devil access. I choose to be a happy person now. You come, I'm, I'm, I'm a joyous, joyous, joyous. He said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, again, I repeat it. Koinonia, hear me. Many people will laugh at what you are doing. But they will not deny the result. The result will be strange. I guarantee you. I don't share my testimonies again so that it will not be as if I'm coming to Koinonia and all I'm saying. But there are things I will share with you, you will not be able to sleep that were gotten on the platform of engaging these mysteries. Let me tell you another strange thing. The spirit of prophecy, the spirit of prophecy works with three things. One, a joyful noise. Listen, you can never, never walk in the prophetic without joy. The spirit, the spirit, the true spirit of prophecy works with joy. But I see angry people who say they are prophets is a joke. The spirit of prophecy. Let me tell you, most people who do different religions, do you know how they invoke the anointing upon mediums? They play instruments, they do music. You've seen masquerades. 
they are moving, playing with fire, somebody jumping on somebody, and then they reach a crescendo when a spirit lands on the head of whoever is the medium, and all of a sudden he starts prophesying. Are we together? The prophet said, bring me a mystery. And as he began to play the mystery, he said, the hand of the Lord came upon him. And then he began to prophesy. You shall not see wind, you shall not see rain, but the valley. Now that strange breakthrough, no rain, no wind, but the valley filled with water. Are we together? I'm telling you, I, have, if I believe with all my heart that I have fast-tracked somebody's life now with this revelation. With this revelation. Call your parents. All this complaint. All this complaint. My daughter, when will you marry now? Is it that there are no men in Koinonia? Is it that you are sitting outside? Eh? You, don't, you are not serving in any department. You, you think I don't know what people say all around? That's, that's nonsense. You can be in the third overflow, dancing your destiny, and somebody seated here, huh? God will force him to go and do something outside and see his destiny there. So it's not, it's not about all these games that people play. No. The favor of God can come upon your life. You step into the office. Your director did not intend talking to you, but you say, um, okay, she was not in that list. It's her name there, please. Add it. You people should come and see me. See, even me, Joshua Selman, there are people who have helped that I didn't, I didn't plan to. I just saw the joy and the ecstasy. Look at the frown and come and see if I cause your problems. No. Come with joy. You are bubbling. I'm not saying fake it. But they are happy. The joy of the Lord is their strength. You are compelled to bless them. Watch the visitors that come to your house. Somebody just comes and knocks. Are you around? Say, please, can I get cold water before I talk to you? You are in a hurry for them to leave. Because you see, let me tell you, depression has a presence. Depression has a presence. Someone can step into your life, kill your joy, close your heavens and walk away. We are going to sing before the Lord for two or three minutes. And command some fearful results. Fearful results. Fearful results. Fearful results. But before we get there, I want you to open your mouth and blast in tongues for the next six to seven minutes from the depth of your heart. Lift your voice and pray. My life is spiritual. My life is spiritual. My life is spiritual. Shabra shakabas kebarato shubra da balada balada ba. Shekete prakoto sodo bagada balada balada ba. My life is spiritual. Skata parata kas kabari eko sodo balada balada ba. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. So take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, my breakthrough is spiritual. My job is spiritual. Don't stop. Don't stop. You are aligning your spirit for breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray. Listen. You are going to say, Father, take away any carnal interpretation. I've been interpreting things wrongly. That's why the doors have closed. I thought it was my mother. I thought it was my father. I obtained mercy and forgiveness for blaming people wrongly 
Lift your voice and pray. I obtain mercy for wrong interpretation. I obtain mercy. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to pray this next prayer point with all your heart. Lord, the spirit of bitterness, anger, unforgiveness that has been tying down my next level, I cast it from my life. Lift your voice and pray. I cast it from my life. I cast it from my destiny. Pray, pray. So take the paradox of Ariata. It's a year of triumph. It's a year of triumph. La paca to catasca, pratas que le pasó. Raquel se cacha la rana, la rana, la rana, la rana. Son pronto, son completos para la. Rakata pareka te gosho la rana, la rana. La grato sobre que te, e grato soto para la rana, la rana. La pato sobre que te, que te, requeto sobre to shaba ya la rana. Aleluya, aleluya. While still praying, Lord, I challenge the spirit of fear and worry. Listen, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you something. These spirits work like twins. Fear and worry. Worry about whether or not you will make it. Worry about whether or not you will get the job. Fear comes and then you start worrying. Will I ever marry? Will I ever have a child? Will I ever do well? They are dangerous spirits. Lift your voice and curse them by the God of heaven. I cause worry. I cause worry. I cause worry. Shake it, shake it, bala 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 bala. I cause fear. You are of the devil. God has not given me the spirit of fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear. I reject you. I reject you. I reject you from my life. Hallelujah. Oh.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hold on. Hold on, please. Hold on. Now, listen. Hold on, hold on, please. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. So that we can make progress. We are going to give God, listen. Hold on, please. We are going to give God three. I tell you, if you know the things that are happening in the realm of the spirit, just with this little dance. Hold on. Hold on. Listen. Believe me when I tell you these mysteries are fearful instruments of deliverance. We are going to give God, hold on, please. We are going to give God, listen, hold on, hold on. We are going to give God three shouts, three sets. Hold on, I will direct you. Just three shouts from your heart. I know that it may not make sense to you, but when I say shout, I want you to rejoice and then the second and then the third shout. You see what happened in Jericho? The walls of Jericho. You will be surprised. Hallelujah. Hold on. Koinonia, hold on. Hold on. Just praise God. Just follow my directives. Some of you will not even be able to shout the third one. Hold on. Are you ready now? Listen. Hold on. Listen. It is not an ordinary shout. There is an anointing upon it. It's a shout of warfare. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe me. Believe me, you will command a level of results that will make you afraid. You are disarming powers beyond your imagination. Are you ready now? Fathers, we obey you. I pray that you honor your name. Put your name upon this shout. Shout number one. Are you ready? Now go ahead and shout. Keep going. Hallelujah. Help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. The second shout, listen, that we're about to shout is a shout of strange open doors. Hold on. Strange. Believe what I'm telling you. The anointing of the Spirit is upon me. A shout of strange strange open doors are you ready now that every closed door must swing open go ahead and shout now Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sabaratish. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen. Listen. Hold on, please. Now, please, just follow me so we we'll conserve time. This is what I want you to do. Listen, please. This is what I want you to do. After the third shout, listen to me. After the third shout, worshipers, you just begin to play. I want you to open your mouth and begin to call things. Call things. After the third shout, hold on, hold on. After the third shout, praise God. I know we're all going to be excited, but you try to stop. The moment the third shout is there, just set the atmosphere for us. 
I want you to begin to call things that be not. Call things that be not. You will be surprised, my brothers and my sisters. Are you ready now? Hold on. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have sent me to open up the eyes of your people. And Lord, I pray, I have done as you have told me to do, and I pray that you honor this third child. The Bible says, after two days, he will revive us. He said, but in the third day, he will raise us up. Lord, let this be a shout of strange triumph. Let this be a shout of strange triumph. Strange triumph. Are we together now? Please make sure after the shout, whether you are on the, under the anointing or open your mouth and speak. Call for things. Are we together? Thank you, Jesus. Are you ready now? Are you ready now? Go ahead and Open your mouth and begin to prophesy. 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 I call it forth. The next level of my destiny. I call it forth. The gift of man. The gift of man. Strange helpers. I call you, arise for me. Strange anointing. So go, 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 go. Strange favor. Strange favor. I call you for. I call you for. I call you for. Help from Zion. I call for speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Break through to my life. Break through to my destiny. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Speak. Speak. You are a speaking spirit. Speak. Speak. Every Jericho standing before me. You crumble. Every Jericho. Jericho standing before me, I curse you by the God of heaven. I call for strange breakthroughs. Strange breakthroughs. Strange revelations. Strange encounters of the spirit realm. Strange encounters with the world. A new wine. New anointing. New graces. I call for new mantles, new dimensions, heavier weights of power, heavier weights of grace. Hallelujah. 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 Fire is burning in this place. Listen, I want us to spare two minutes and rescue our families. Let them tap into this mystery. Begin to prophesy to the gates and say, I have praised on behalf of my family. I command that devil, you must go. I wage the warfare through my praise. I wage the warfare. Mato soto pakata rete kete kete bo soto balabalaba. I command it. Let my family members go. I command it. 
what you have done tonight oh no no come on listen listen let me tell you this let me tell you this listen i say it with every sense of humility over 80 percent of the people that sow into this ministry i don't know them some of them are not even koinonia people i don't know where they are any part of the world are you hearing what I'm saying now? You don't need to know nobody. You just need to know these mysteries. Know them. The mysteries know the people. Are we together now? My only prayer for you this night, and I'm going to keep praying it until I see that result in your life. It says, strangers shall come and feed your flock. Strangers. Listen. Hold on. Many of you have not entered that realm. You have only entered the realm of those who know you. And so for their love, they help you. You have not entered the realm of the ministry of strangers. Listen, when the prophet met with, listen, when the prophet met with Saul, he said, Saul, as you are going, you will meet three men. He didn't say three relatives. Three men, they are holding bread. They will salute you and they will give it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. Men you don't know. Women you don't know. People who don't know you from Adam. They will arise and favor you strangely. They will arise and favor you strangely. I command them to arise and favor you strangely. Hear me. Anyone here or any family that has been in the same position for a long time. No ma you have prayed, you have fasted. Nobody moves in your family. It's like the devil has kept them in one place. No job, no joy, no breakthrough in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. The same way he said, I set before you an open door. He said, no man can shut. I command the door to your next level open now. I command the door to your next level open now. Next level of ministry. Next level of business exploits. Next level of strategic relationships. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are people who must show up in your life. What you need from them is not money. You need their credibility and endorsement. Listen. Some of us, our helpers want to come. But our helpers are afraid of us. Because they have never tested whether we have integrity or not. So they need somebody who has the influence and the charisma. Who has vetted you to commend for you. Joseph of Arimathea had to tell he told Herod, he said, give Jesus to me. You think if the disciples went, they would not lock them up? I will keep drumming this. It's a revelation God gave me for you. You need the ministry of men. All this, I can do it alone. You need help. Oh. Let me tell you, you need help. There are families you need a helper. Everybody that has entered your family caused trouble and destroyed you. Because something called them. Your ignorance called them. Darkness called them. Disobedience called them. Who told you strangers cannot enter and help families? Are we together now? Whoever needs to speak for you where your voice cannot yet go in the name of Jesus this night not tomorrow, this night Listen, I decree and declare, may your discussion come to the ears of your helpers. I command men to talk about you to your helpers. I decree it. I declare it. I decree it. I declare it. I decree it. I declare it. Listen, hold on. Mordecai was not there when they were talking about him. Mordecai was seated somewhere. Are we together? But when that anointing landed, the king could not sleep. He said, go and bring me the chronicles. Bring me the books. Read them for me. A king could not sleep. And while they were reading it, he heard that Mordecai did something. And he said, hold on. Hold on. This guy did something and nobody helped him. The voice that will command restoration for you. Hear me? The voice that must say, no, this was injustice. Let's go back and correct it. I call for that voice now. I call for that voice now. I call for that voice now. We're rounding up. Tonight's service is a powerful service. Pay attention. Just receive these prayers I'm praying for you. And see what happens. You will now see the difference between you and ordinary men. When you see the results you command, then you will know that there are mysteries in this world. Life is spiritual. Hallelujah. Listen. Paul said, I desire to come to you once and again. He said, but Satan, when the Lord opened my eyes, year before last, I was, I've not shared this with anybody. I saw several people, white men, individuals, several people. And then in that vision, I heard them talking about me. And all of them were in a place like a circle. You know how you use chalk to draw circle. And the Lord told me, all these are people who have been destined to sow into my life, to bless me, and to announce what God is doing. Come on now. Men, I prayed. Men, I prayed. I prayed. I prayed with my spirit. Let me tell you, when that thing happened, I stepped into a strange level of favor. The ministry of men. There are men blocking you all. There are men blocking your testimony. The moment God wants your helper, an enemy comes before them and says, don't help her to me. Something happened. Don't help that girl. She used to be a prostitute last year. But you have repented now. Every enemy standing and speaking to your helper 
I'm praying this now. Anyone speaking to your helper so that they don't arise to help you, I curse them by the God of heaven. I curse them by the God of heaven. I curse them by the God of heaven. Hear me. I don't care who they are. For as long as their job is to stand and change the minds of your helpers. Someone wants to marry you. Before he speaks to you, a wicked person arises and says, don't, don't go to that girl. I pray. Rapoto soto beketia. I cause their operation tonight. 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 Hallelujah. I pray for you. The grace to remain ever joyful. The grace to be free from worry. Yes. If there's anyone here and you don't sleep, simply because the moment you want to sleep, there is a wicked spirit that will bring issues. You have not paid this. You have not done this. Your child's school fees has not been paid. I command that this night will be the best sleep you have had in a long time. Hallelujah. I want you to wave your hands to Jesus and give him all the praise. Yes, Lord, we give you praise. He said, let my prayers rise to you and the lifting up of my hands like the evening sacrifice. Lord, I wave my hands. We wave our hands to you. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Hallelujah. I want to give you an assignment. Please listen. Listen, from today till next Friday, just do this. It's a simple instruction. From today till next Friday, find any time of the day and dedicate just 10 minutes. Hear me? Sing and dance. Dance before the Lord. Just do it. I know it's seven days. It's not easy. You can do it as a family. You don't have to disturb neighbors. You can just stroll around to one forest somewhere. Just stand behind one tree and dance and watch the God of vengeance. I've been saying this thing, the God of... Let me tell you something. Hear me. Believe me, I speak to you as a servant of God. We declare this week a week of strange vengeance. Strange, strange vengeance. You may not believe it. Where records will be revisited and God will say, no, no, no. This family, since 1998, I destined them to be free. Who kept them? Who kept them? Lord, I pray that you honor this word. That as your people obey these instructions from this night, Friday, till next week, Friday, let there be strength. Please, do me a favor. I know some of you don't like sharing testimonies, but I would like to hear the testimonies. Please. Do that even if it's just because of me. On Friday, once you reach us, march to the media. We want to hear the strange testimonies. I know that you have testimonies for other things, but just for this night's service, you will be surprised. You will come back with strange testimonies. Hear me? I pity any man this week that stands in your way as you dance. Except God is not the God of heaven. It has been declared as this week a week of strange results, vengeance. See, that's how to force your destiny to open. You, you play games with your destiny, you will die like a chicken. That's how to deal, that's how to be recession proof. When you force the gates, on Friday you will be surprised to see what will happen to people. Some of you from this night now, as you are going, you will read text messages. Alerts, favors, different kinds of things. Hallelujah. The body of Christ 
is full of a lot of ignorance when it comes to the issue of prayer when it comes to the issue of warfare when it comes to the issue of the interaction between the realm of the spirit and the earth realm there is gross ignorance in the body of Christ as to the mysteries that are responsible for these operations that's what I've been seeking to do to teach us and help us understand how men can contact the realm of the spirit because man by design is the only entity that on legal grounds has the authorization to make contact with the realm of the spirit and make contact with the physical realm at will every other entity needs a system of authorization an altar is a system of authorization i want to share a few things with you about altars an altar is a system of authorization an altar is not just a monument it is a system of authorization an altar is a platform write it down where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds an altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds i'm taking out time for us to write this because i want us to understand it a spirit or an entity cannot enter another entity another territory without the configuration to suit that territory for instance a spirit should not be in the earth without a body that's against the law of territory if you must function in the earth realm as a territory you must have a body are we together now so every spirit including god is at the mercy of a body or an altar to find expression in a territory the first death recorded in the bible happened on account of altars two men brothers went to offer sacrifices and all of them created platforms that was way before the old testament adam had access to mysteries and he taught his children how to invoke the presence of god and it's not the way it is today there and then you will know whether what you did worked or not and the bible says abel did something and cain did something too and all of a sudden the sacrifice of abel ascended the heavens are we together now and then for cain nothing happened and then cain killed his brother and blood spilled upon the earth and he thought it was over but the bible told us that discussion continued in the realm of the spirit something about that activity called the presence of god and god said okay there is a discussion going on in heaven but this discussion is between me and blood so what is going on he said am i my brother's keeper i said ah, don't tell lies there is a witness standing in heaven here that blood a symbol of an altar is granted me authorization to probe you and because of that i'm going to curse you judgment still happened even after abel died listen very carefully to what i'm teaching you supernatural system of authorization an altar let me give you one more definition is where covenants are activated and maintained an altar is the platform where covenants are both activated and maintained a covenant cannot work without an altar it is an altar that gives life to a covenant it's impossible for altars to work covenants to work without an altar an altar is like the battery that powers this gadget for instance the potentials of this gadget is only seen when you slot in the battery that's what an altar is it gives life to a covenant now write this down please altars can be physical monuments 
altars can be institutions and altars can be people altars can be physical monuments like we had in the old testament they would erect stones altars can be institutions like the jerusalem temple that was built by solomon he said oh god if anybody faces this temple and prays hearken to that person's prayer not because of the rightness of the prayer but a covenant that was enacted there and an altar was raised to that effect the reason why salvation the covenant of salvation can work is because there is an altar that was erected not just in the earth in heaven the book of hebrews tells us that jesus the high priest carried his blood to the most holy place in heaven and poured it upon an altar that is still speaking today that is the basis upon which whoever calls upon the name of the lord whether in you are sleeping whether you are awake it kicks that reality you will be saved because there is an altar that eternally secures that there are many platforms that god has created to allow spirit entities to find expression in the earth realm to come and assist men to come and empower men but if we do not understand those platforms then we will not be able to take advantage of it and one of it is what i'm talking about tonight an altar of prayer as a system of authorization an altar of prayer as a mystery that on legal grounds authorizes the realm of the spirit to influence the activities of men here in the earth realm please write this down the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life not bible study no sir the most accurate measure of how healthy your spiritual life is is your prayer life no matter what else is working in your life if your prayer life is dead then you are not spiritual are we together anyone can preach anyone can teach but not everyone can pray never forget this it's very easy to preach very easy to teach but it's a sacrifice to pray any and everyone can preach any and everyone can teach but not everyone can pray because prayer is a sacrifice is a mystery let me tell you something God is so meticulous about the revelation of altars that he rules the world sitting on an altar the very throne room is like a shrine surrounded with mysteries the epicenter of the throne room is the very throne that he sits upon that throne you see is an altar it's what makes him the ancient of days he sits upon that altar and manipulates things according to his predetermined counsel doesn't have to walk around heaven to find out who is rebellious there is a system that has been designed to ensure order an altar anyone who will walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar everyone who seeks to walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar tonight we are particularly looking at the altar of prayer the ministry of prayer is one that is largely hated by many either because of the spiritual energy that it involves or because of the sacrifice and the discipline that is involved in the ministry of prayer but scattered around scripture all through the bible are scriptures that encourage believers to pray and it makes them understand that their lives and their victories dependent on it in luke chapter 18 verse 1 the bible says he spake this parable to the end 
that means the goal of this parable was to teach men a lesson and the lesson is that men ought always to pray and not to faint always always not a circumstantial activity men ought always to pray and not to faint in matthew chapter 21 when you read from verse 13 the bible says jesus entered the temple and he saw people buying and selling and doing all kinds of things in the temple and he was angry and in verse 13 chapter 21 he scattered everywhere and said my house shall be called a house of prayer my house shall be called a house of prayer it's impossible to be a man of prayer and ignore the word but it's possible to be a man of the word and ignore prayer when the devil wants to deceive you he makes you look like you have an option to choose between prayer and the word and then he indoctrinates you and carries takes advantage of your passion for knowledge and keeps you to be cold and dry and lukewarm and all of a sudden you begin to search scriptures like a philosopher and there is no power no grace no efficiency every great ministry starts from the altar of prayer any ministry that does not start as a prayer ministry will not last it's impossible the ministry of jesus started as a prayer ministry the moment he was filled with the holy spirit he was driven of the spirit 40 days and 40 nights traveling in prayer and the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit all of a sudden his fame began to spread devils will fly around and say no 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 you have come to destroy us before our time the ministry of prayer In James chapter 5 verse 16 please give it to us James chapter 5 verse 16 I want you to understand this tonight is an admonishment and then we're going to pray James 5 verse 16 he says confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that he may be healed then he says the effectual prayer of a righteous man he says availed much availed much amplified says it is dynamic in its working it can produce results and we're going to examine these results that the prayer of a believer is not just an empty talk it's not just an exercise in futility it's not just a religious system to feel spiritual that every time men pray there is an effect now theologically speaking the classic scripture that is used to represent the activity of altars is Genesis chapter 28. We are not turning there for time's sake, but many of us know it. I'm just giving you a little theological background. Um, Abraham had passed across a region and the Bible says that he set up an altar there. And many years later, Jacob, his son, are we together now? A son in the flesh now, a, a generation, now was passing that place and the night time came. And he felt look let me just lie down and sleep and the Bible says he put stones together and laid down to sleep he didn't pray for an encounter he didn't beg for an encounter the moment he slept the Bible says his eyes were open and he saw strange activities happening the angels ascending descending it was like a, a portal a ladder and at the top of it was God himself and he was surprised when he woke up he said wow this is a portal this is the gate of heaven i saw something that happened a portal an altar the lord was in this place and i knew not now watch this is because jacob slept there and recorded his experience that we know that that place had an effect do you know that whether or not jacob slept there you can be passing peacefully and for whatever reason cross across that place and something happens to you all of a sudden you find out that the sickness just disappeared you didn't pray now you are wondering what happened now you don't know it was jacob's experience that helped us to understand that there was such a thing the same way elijah when he was about to leave he knew that there was a, an exact portal that can take men physically he went beyond the jordan 
and he said elisha asked i'm about to leave and right before his eyes he saw chariots when jesus was about to levitate to go to heaven he knew exactly where to stand when he they watched him and he began to rise there are physical portals in the earth that open up to the realm of the spirit not visions physical places a man can stand there today and have encounters whether you are the prophetic or not which is understand this many people understand this i wish i had time to teach you on altars because i would teach you that one of the natural ways of establishing an altar is consistency of a practice within a region it opens up an altar consistency of practice within a region that that atmosphere is spiritually acclimatized the moment you practice something consistently you attract the spirit dimension of that thing to come and find out what is going on so if i keep killing people in a particular region i don't need to invite any spirit i create a portal the moment a spirit comes in partnership with me that becomes an altar that's why in many regions many campuses they have different regions some have prayer mountains some have we used to have years ago um, in the campus there somewhere they call lawn tennis court that was a physical solid portal that's where you see people carry their rechargeable and their socks for mosquitoes and go there and lie down and say oh god if you don't help me i'm dead and by the next morning there is a miracle you find people just mind their business standing and start shaking because activities over many years there were people making use of that ground and it became sanctified angelic activities became so much there it was it was like how you do home cell because there are visitations and many members are within a region you dedicate a place and say look all of you within this region you can freely find expression here consistency can open up a portal are you learning something tonight that's how many of our parents made our homes certain portals every time they continued doing certain things and they did not know when they invited the spirit dimensions you see let me tell you consistency attracts the realm of the spirit consistent ask those who practice other religions you know how they invoke spirits enchantments the same word repeated over a long period of time how do they celebrate traditional festivals in many villages the people keep dancing doing the same thing for hours and then it becomes like they are supercharged at a point the spirit component of that activity has come i like you to say lord open my eyes say it open my eyes open my eyes there is a law in the dealings of God with men and he says whatever you yield yourself to he says you will become a slave of that thing have, have you have you are we together if I practice obedience consistently I have yielded my members to obedience I become a slave to obedience are we together now you see watch this if I steal this handkerchief watch this if I steal this handkerchief out of my volition it's not enough to bring the spirit of theft in my life no if I do it again and I do it again that I don't know I'm invoking a mystery by my consistency a time will come the spirit that operates on men Will say i'm being invited within a territory it will look for the territory where the physical dimension of what is bringing it is the same way if i begin to pray i may not feel comfortable but as i'm praying i'm invoking a dimension of the operation of the spirit of the spirit of prayer and supplication a day will come in that place that dimension will be revealed in me supernaturally are you learning something 
because you see not all altars were consciously built but they are still altars so it is when i say altars that are destroying you it doesn't mean you have to go to your village and waylay your uncle and say if you don't tell us what you have done we will beat you no he may be innocent this is where the prophetic ministry must be guided because every time we talk of altar they think it must be traceable to a real experience no the mysteries that you do consistently are building altars and they eventually become invitations for spirits whether the spirit of god or any kind of demon spirit have you had an experience i'm not saying you should do it but you've seen it in ministries where somebody can come no church service just enter the church and come and lie down on the altar and roll maybe for a child and go back and have triplets now question was anybody preaching but because the the power and the presence of god has found expression upon that ground for a long time you have invited you have invoked a dimension whether service is at work or not that portal remains open all that it takes is your faith once your faith meanders that atmosphere it happens to you samuel was an altar he didn't have an altar he was an altar you never came near samuel and went back to say no a young man came around Samuel and stood naked prophesied morning till night that's an altar when Saul went and met Samuel they were looking for the donkey as soon as they saw Samuel they knew their lives were going to be altered I told you altars are not just physical monuments you can be an altar and that's one of the things that prayer does you don't build a monument your life becomes the activation of several listen the beauty of prayer is not just for you to continue talking for the rest of your life but that you get to a state of consistency where even in your silence listen you have become an altar spiritual activities can be happening around you so that as a living altar i activate possibilities just by walking you come around me and something happens to you i didn't directly pray for you you didn't even know you had that problem but an atmosphere that i was carrying implicated you why is prayer important why do we have to build an altar of prayer three reasons very quickly number one prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him write it down prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him the Bible is very clear that the communion of the spirit the fellowship of the spirit what we call koinonia must be at work in the life of anyone to do business with God and that system of koinonia is through prayer prayer is one of god's authorized system not the only authorized system but one of the major authorized system for communion and fellowship luke chapter 6 let's take a few scriptures very quickly luke chapter 6 and verse 12 please give it to us luke chapter 6 and verse 12 then we'll look at matthew 26 verse 36 and down to 39 is actually to 44 but we'll stop at 39 quickly Luke chapter 6 verse 12 look up everyone please it says and it came to pass those days speaking about Jesus now that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God communion Jesus was not just praying prayer requests like we do during miracle service remember he was God he still is God, but he went to spend time all night communing, communing, 
give us Matthew Matthew 26 and verse 36 Matthew 26 verse 36 then come at Jesus with them listen this was uh, his passion was about to start then come at Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples sit here while I go and pray yonder and let's watch what the Bible calls prayer and he took from him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to, to be sorrowful and very heavy 38 then he said unto them my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death tarry here and watch with me please continue quickly and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying saying this sounds like a communication a conversation my father if it be possible let this call pass of me when you read down to verse 44 he prayed the same thing three times prayer is God's authorized system of communion not just a platform for petitions prayer is how power is transferred to men is an authorized system of communion is your spiritual system of intimacy and intercourse in the place of prayer that's where the exchange happens between divinity Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit but never manifested the power of the Holy Ghost after prayer the Bible says he returned not full of the Spirit but in the power of the Spirit in Luke 17 don't turn there John 17 sorry Jesus himself began to communicate with the father as usual and he says father the hour has come watch communion to prayer the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son will bring glory to you and then he began to converse look at all the platforms till today listen till today how Jesus advocates for believers in heaven is still through prayer the Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the father and he makes intercession for the saints why will you intercede when you are already seated by the right hand it's a system it's not about proximity it's a system of communion and communication if you are not a man of prayer you are not a woman of prayer you can be sure that the reality of communion and fellowship with the Holy Ghost that reality you see let me tell you something if you are not open to prayer you will never understand what we are saying you would think it's just um i'm not just talking of corporate prayer corporate prayer is great but you must have the secret place that's where he comes to meet with you that's when he tells you things he cannot tell any other person the reason why you don't hear god is because you are not used to his voice in the secret place he has not trained you to hear him so you hear everything and you call it him I was counseling a couple some I think I don't know if it was last week and um, the mother was outside and the father came in with the daughters maybe they are even here listening to me and they held a little baby as soon as the baby shouted from outside the mother identified the voice and came to check what was happening with the baby and I said koinonia that's intimacy because there is a union that baby is sucking from the same mother their interaction the mother did not train herself to hear the voice she was implicated by that koinonia so anywhere she, there were many people families with their children but when she had her own he said my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice meaning if you cannot ask hear his voice find out whether you are his sheep or not don't assume you are his sheep assumption is costly in the school of intimacy you must verify that there is contact between you and God there are pastors that don't pray so they get angry they think the manifestation of the power of God is magic there are dimensions impartation will not give you you must dig your well by yourself you must create an altar a system you must gain mastery in the realm of the spirit you must be used to the spiritual communication that has been act is is like a tailor-made system of god reaching you god must know how to reach you on serious informations 
God must know how to reach you on trivial information. He must train your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit. That place of training is the secret place. I will never trade anything for my time with him. That's where men are built. That's where there is an exchange. See, let me tell you. Holding a mic and teaching is not difficult. Holding a mic and preaching is not difficult. But communicating life, that one is a derivative of your altar. That's why we sleep in church. That's why our churches are full of dry bones. From the preacher to those listening, all dry bones. People stand and talk. They say something that should bless you and you wonder why it doesn't bless you. Because there's no altar. They are standing unassisted by the realm of the spirit. Only the people who destroy the destinies of men in villages know this. The average believer is generally aware of the spirituality of life, but has not come into an understanding that one of the keys to spiritual intelligence is to come to terms with the fact that life and everything about it is spiritual. Life and what everything about it no matter how trivial no matter how scientific spiritual hallelujah spiritual when you understand the spirituality of life then all of a sudden you will start seeing a line connecting dots as to the happenings of people's lives. Listen, a man does not just get up and become poor like that. A family does not just get up and not make progress just like that. A man does not just beat his wife just like that. A wife does not just beat her husband just like that. The, the source of that strength requires investigation. Are we together now? A small child does not become so audacious that he looks at his father and says, I can kill you. No, 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 no. The, the source of that audacity has to be investigated. Life is spiritual. A church does not just grow. Members don't just carry their Bibles from different points and start saying, let's go to the same place without knowing themselves. There's no wire connecting them. You don't just open a shop and everybody from everywhere decides that they want to come to you. No, sir. No, sir. Life is spiritual. You see men moving all around and you do not know what moves them. Spirituality of life. Someone decides to help you, but you show up and something about your life you are not aware of makes the person to drive you away. Someone promises to marry you, even goes to see your parents. And all of a sudden, introduction has been done. He just comes up and says, I had a strange dream I can't understand. That's not the first time of having a dream. But because of that dream, you lose out on an opportunity. Brothers and sisters, if you understand that life is spiritual, you already, without even understanding the nitty gritties, you are already ahead of many people in life. I will never treat my life from a scientific perspective. No. I will never treat ministry from a scientific perspective. In the realm of the spirit, one plus one is not two. You have to define what one is. You have to define what two is. You have to define what other factors are in the equation. We run our lives scientifically. We run our lives intellectually, sociologically, and we become victims. The book of Job is full of mysteries that open up the reality of the spirituality of life when you look at the book of psalms david opened us to the spirituality of life when you read psalm 91 he starts by saying he that dwells 
in the secret place. Question, where is that location today? Because David said, a man can dwell there. Have you found it? Where is it? Like an address. David is giving us an address where people can find safety. And he never said a police station. He that dwells somewhere, there is a place a man can stand that you become immune. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Then the second shocking thing is shall abide not under the light, under the shadow. What is that? Abide under a shadow? That means your shadow has a spiritual implication. This thing you look at. Li listen, listen, listen. I'm not talking of all this moving around you and let you fall down. That's, I'm talking of something deeper. You know physics just tells us when light is casted on an object, it creates a shadow. That's as far as you know. But the Bible says men can dwell under a man's shadow. <laughs> Do you love Jesus? We love the Bible, right? So, I mean, you are not, the way you are looking at me is as if I'm teaching heresy. It's, it's right in the Bible. Shall abide under. He gives the shadow of God a three-dimensional explanation. You can come under it. Then he says, I will say of the Lord, he is this and that and that and that. Please give it to us, Psalm 91. Let's look at it. Yes, that's the song. Your influence is all over me. Verse 2. And I will say of the Lord, he is my what? Refuge and my fortress, my God. In him I will not trust. So let's see why verse 1 and 2 is there. Verse 3. It says, surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Look at all these descriptions. They are descriptions of strange things. You don't see them with your optical eyes, but their effects are as physical as anything. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with what? Stop. Hold on. Describe a man for me with a three-dimensional shadow and has feathers somewhere in his body which part of him has feathers because he was not just speaking a parable he says he shall cover thee with his feathers <laughs> then and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield that means in the realm of the spirit truth is not an information truth is a physical reality it's a shield you can hold it like i'm holding a tie truth is is, is an object relatable are you getting something now? You will be so blessed if you pay attention to what I'm telling you. Five. This is not even this. I just want us to look at it. Just play around it. It says because of all these provisions, this is the only condition where thou shalt not be afraid because there is something called terror by night. Everybody say terror by night. No matter how peaceful an environment is, the Bible says once it is night, there is a mystery of darkness and terror. Listen, the Bible says we wrestle not against, against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. Listen, then it says rulers of darkness. They, don't, they cannot rule in light. The moment, he's not talking of spiritual darkness. The moment there is physical darkness, it's a sign they are authorized to come out. Like animals that can only come out in the night. So the Bible calls it terror by night. Yet, it's night time people like. That's why people die in the night. They that drink, drink in the night. When you see a man drinking by seven in the morning, he's, he's a stupid man. Already something is wrong with his life, but that's a, an acute complication. No. Many things happen to people in the night. The destinies of men are exchanged by night. There are men that sit down and discuss. They play the destinies of men like a chess. Terror by night. Not just um, terrorism as we know. Are you aware that there is such provision? Spiritual intelligence. Number one, life. Spiritual. Hmm. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day have you ever seen them have you ever seen an arrow living somewhere 
But he said there are arrows that fly by day. Only God knows how many people it hits today. Because it flies every day. You get up and leave your house and something happens. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. Life is spiritual. Job chapter 1, a meeting was being held in the heavenlies. Satan now comes and a conversation is engaged. Have you considered my servant Job? While they are discussing that Job is on earth, minding his business. And all of a sudden things begin to nosedive in Job's life. It's amazing how many people try to ignore the spirituality of life and expect to rise in life. It's impossible. It's impossible. And more so, this is Africa. You know, we just pretend as... I'm not talking of witchcraft. The portals of Africa are open to spirituality. It doesn't matter through which force. I'm just saying the portals of Africa as a continent is richly open have you not heard of men walking back home and a hand slap them have, have you heard of those kind of things a real three-dimensional hand but they didn't see it you don't have to see it to feel it are we together and the person goes back and all of a sudden one of us showed me a picture of his dad yesterday half of the leg had been eaten you can literally see the bones like that half of it do you know what happened he was sleeping. A mystery happened. He woke up and all of a sudden, that leg physically. There are many things you call sicknesses. You don't even know where it came from. I'm sick. You go to the hospital, they tell you there is nothing wrong with you. They check everything. You know, the doctor even says, stop coming here. You are, you are wasting our time. But you know you are not feeling fine. Are we together? Mysteries that cannot be explained. Life is spiritual. I learned this very early in life. The spirituality of life. The spirituality of ministry. The spirituality of living. When you know this, your pursuit for God does not become, you know, every time you see somebody unusually zealous, they just say, Kai, this guy, I'm sure you are going to be a pastor. Or this lady, I'm sure God is already grooming you. He has isolated you and is grooming you to be a pastor's wife. No. The key to survival is to become spiritually minded. Please hear what I'm saying. Some of our parents right now, ignore this and they are paying for it dearly there are mysteries in people's families they do not they do not understand life is everything spiritual when jesus came his birth was spiritual everything about it now look at this for god's sake a woman is minding her business probably imagining what dress will i wear for my wedding all of a sudden a stranger just appears. Hail Mary! He didn't even say, what is your name, ma? Hail Mary! In other words, we have been watching you. Your name is Mary. We know. You don't have to tell anyone your name in the realm of the Spirit. No, sir. No, sir. If God ever asks you what is your name, it's for a reason. I mean, it doesn't make sense for him to ask you what is your name. He wants to change it. Then that's when he will ask you. Yeah, in Scripture, Saul, Paul, and all of that. But that they are asking you because they want you to supply an information. No. 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 Are we together? Do you know? Let me teach you something. You can never see a spirit being and be the same. Whether a demon, whether an angel. You may never know what happens to you. Brothers and sisters, listen. If this is a shrine and you just run by mistake and say, Oh, the wrong place. As you never will live the same. No, it's impossible. Impossible impossible you thought you ran too fast to be seen the realm of the spirit is not like that please understand what i'm saying if you know this that you are coming for koinonia you may be sitting outside you will never feel bad again because you realize that wow this thing is that it's just because we are 
because of the physical comfort of maybe being inside and all of that but it makes no difference that's why you can be saying god is touching somebody and someone in the second overflow is flying there you that you are close you are now looking at ah, god you mean you jumped me listen the holy spirit does not move with time and distance mm -mm. these two factors don't exist no 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 like you say i have to touch you before touching you that's physics in the realm of the spirit you don't do that are we together are you understanding this so you can never see a spirit being anybody that tells you he has been having encounters with spirits i think you should respect that person whether in a negative way or positive way that i've had some appreciable and except if, if the person is lying if the person is telling the truth no you are meeting a dangerous person for good or for bad most of the world leaders interact with spirits please look at me let me preach to you forget the fact that you see everybody wearing suits and going for forums they are being advised counseled rebuked directed by strange spirits there are documentaries upon documentaries on my system that proves to you that no man let me teach you something brothers and sisters you want to be famous a day will come a spirit must show up in your life to say all right now that you have gotten to this level we have to negotiate for it to go further i give you a guarantee 100 percent if jesus does not appear to you an angel sent from god does not appear to you a demon who are somebody is seen it's like a realm you keep rising nobody disturbs you but you get to a point they say okay everybody that rises from here right now the realm of the spirit cannot be strange to such a person that's why you enter a business meeting somebody looks at you you look at him two of you know yourselves everybody knows what he has touched or otherwise there is a level you cannot be neutral believe what i'm telling you when you see people doing some things they are doing they have seen something when a woman looks at you and says i will kill you mark my words you better take it seriously either pray or stand on the confidence of what you now know but you say ah, this is what you just you would really die because you see let me tell you there are too many laws that can remove your spirit from your body many many laws many laws N not just death there are many spiritual laws that can separate a man's body from his spirit any of them can be manipulated to kill you you see that sickness and accident are physical expressions of the commonest laws that are used to separate people's bodies from their spirits like you skin a cow have you gone to the abattoir you see them they have a skill they skin a cow there is a mystery that can remove your spirit from your body and many people move carelessly and then it happens it may happen through a car it may happen through different things but it is still a manifestation of this you cannot sit on certain positions being neutral it's impossible i remember one of our friends years ago he got a job and i remember him saying they were paying them them that were struggling they were paying them fifty thousand, and they were paying the prophets 1.2 now if they don't call it salary they call it honorarium but it's still a release of something from the giver to the person who needs it they pay you fifty thousand for laborious study of five six years under the most stringent conditions possible and somebody just throws and comes in and they give the person 1.2 you know why because that person has an advantage he can do something Hi. life is spiritual life is spiritual life is spiritual i don't have to see you to talk to you life is spiritual life is spiritual people's lives are being manipulated without their will life is spiritual many of us were born in pure christian families we never had any touch with idolatry so you don't understand the spirituality of life but for a few people who veered off here and there did one or two things life is spiritual grandparents just come out and sit on the ground and after a few minutes they stand up they say it's all right it will be well with you go and you are saying what did they see 
Life is spiritual. In the Bible, before they fought wars, they would go and ask the kings and prophets, please, will we win? And then they would say, huh, there's trouble. Though. It would, and then they would say, how can we change it? Now, this is the part of spirituality that shocks me. The ability to change things.